Welcome traders to another Titmill Weekly Market Outlook for a week commencing the 24th of October. Starting in the US, there are lots of important numbers out next week in the US, but none are likely to change the market's forecast for a 75 basis point interest rate hike on the 2nd of November. Third quarter GDP is likely to show positive growth after the technical recession experience in the first half of the year. Those two consecutive quarters of negative growth were primarily caused by volatility in trade and inventories, which should both contribute positively to the third quarter data. Consumer spending is under pressure, but while residential investment will be a drag on growth, markets are looking for a 1.7% annualized rate of GDP growth. We will also get the Fed's favoured measure of inflation, the core personal consumer expenditure deflator. This is expected to broadly match what happened to core CPI. So markets are looking for an annual rate to rise to about 5.2% from 4.9%. With the economy growing and inflation heading in the wrong direction, the Fed cannot really afford to start slowing rate hikes just yet. Also look out for durable goods orders. Boeing had a decent month, so there should be a rise in the headline rates, although ex-transportation orders will likely be softer. We should also pay close attention to consumer confidence and house prices, the surge in mortgage rates and collapse in mortgage applications for home purchases has resulted in falling home sales. With housing supply also on the rise, uh, markets expect to see prices fall for a second month in a row. Over the longer term, this should help to get broader inflation measures lower given the relationship with the rental components that go into CPI. Moving to the charts from a technical perspective, two key levels I'm watching as we head into this week. 111.50, if we can get a breakthrough there, I'm looking for a grind to the downside to retest the prior swing lows here, range support just above 110. If we can get through there, we're looking for this equality objective versus the biggest swing structure here in that 113.80 high, gives us a downside target of 109.10. At this stage, any close back through that 114 handle uh, would be a bullish development and invalidate this, uh, this bearish setup. Then we'd be looking for a retest of prior cycle highs, 114.70, en route to an ideal 115.40. Moving to the Eurozone and uh, really focus this week is going to be on the ECB, hotly anticipated to deliver a 75 basis point uh, rate hike. The Hawks have clearly um, convinced the few dubs left of the necessity to go big on rate hikes. Uh, contrary to the run-up to the July and September meetings, there hasn't been any publicly debated controversy on the size of the rate hikes. In fact, European Central Bank President Christine Lagarde seems to have succeeded in disciplining a sometimes very heterogeneously vocal uh, membership there. To this end, it's hard to see how the ECB cannot move the game by 75 basis points at this week's meeting. As the 75 basis point hike looks like a done deal, all eyes also will be on the other open issues, which are excess liquidity, quantitative tightening, and the terminal interest rate. Besides the ECB, which will be the key focal point for Eurozone traders, uh, we will also be looking at survey gauges of the economy next week. Uh, the PMIs on Monday will be critical to determine whether the Eurozone economy has slid further into contraction or whether an uptick has occurred. There is not much evidence of this though, uh, but Monday will provide more clarity on how the Eurozone economy is performing as of October. So from a technical perspective, the Euro dollar, obviously trading pretty much inverse to the dollar index. So uh, looking for the Euro dollar now as we take out this triangle resistance, looking for some follow through here early on in the week, back through that 99 handle, should set up a move then to test the prior swing highs there just below parity. And as long as pullbacks remain supportive, then we're going to be looking for an upside extension into our equality objective, which is 10090. At this stage, any close back through 96.30 will be a bearish development, opening up further downside to retest prior cycle lows down to 95.30s and then on towards the 94 handle below there. And moving to the UK, obviously uh, political machinations continue to be the focus there. Um, the ruling Conservative Party has said it will fast track plans to get a new leader in place by this Friday and potentially even by Monday, if only one candidate makes it through the MP 
uh, the MP selection rounds. Candidates have until Monday at 2 p.m. to clear the hurdle of 100 MP nominations to make it onto the ballot paper before Conservative MPs vote on the outcome. Now, importantly at this stage, uh, what we know as of Sunday is that Rishi Sunak is the only confirmed candidate to have exceeded that 100 level. There is rumour abounding that uh, Boris Johnson also has uh, has the 100 MP nominations required to make it onto the ballots. Uh, Penny Morden, the other candidate, uh, the other confirmed candidate, only has uh, uh, about 23 votes at this stage. So um, unless there's going to be a late search for her, it looks likely to potentially be between uh, Johnson and Sunak. But if Johnson cannot deliver those 100 MPs, then we could be looking at Prime Minister Sunak being uh, anointed at some point tomorrow. Importantly, though, with only a week to go until the medium-term fiscal plan uh, it's used to be delivered on 31st of October. There's inevitably a question of whether this is enough time for a Prime Minister to rubber stamp uh, Chancellor Jeremy Hunt's plan for uh, debt sustainability. Traders are probably rightly assuming that Hunt will remain in position uh, under a new leader. But the bigger question is whether the Conservative Party can unite behind a new leader and whether a more stable political backdrop can actually emerge. Because if it can't, then not only is there uncertainty surrounding future budget plans, but also whether we would be moving closer to an election in the UK. From a technical perspective, in terms of sterling, whilst we hold this swing low here at the 109.20s, I'm actually looking for an upside extension, take us back through resistance here, 114.35, on then to grind it out to the upside into that 127 extension at 118.16 and ultimately the upside objective versus the swing structure here and the swing low at that 109.20 gives us a 120 upside objective. At this stage, any close back through 108.70 would be a bearish development, opening downside targets 106.93 and then to a 105.30s. Moving to Japan and uh, in terms of data, we have a release on Monday of the services and manufacturing PMIs, last time out 52.2 and 50.8 respectively. Services uh, supported by looser COVID-19 restrictions, but manufacturing really does remain in a fragile state. Then the focus is going to move to the back end of the week on Friday when we will get the BOJ meeting. Markets don't expect policy changes at this week's meeting. However, the odds of a shift on the yield curve control are on the rise and recent developments uh, support this, that a rise in the corridor will occur into March. The BOJ's core inflation, X fresh food and energy jumped to 1% on an annualized basis in September, uh, while momentum in wage inflation is also building. The Trade Union Confederation is requesting a 3% increase in base wages for next spring. Uh, in terms of wage negotiation, the highest in almost 30 years. However, market pressure on the BOJ has also intensified and we did see another round of intervention late on Friday. Uh, so from a technical perspective, it's interesting to note that that uh, the intervention that we saw on Friday, um, if we looked at the last period of intervention, it pretty much matched it in scope and scale in terms of the price reaction. So if we don't get any early follow through into Asian trade through that 146 handle, I could actually see us grinding it back out here in the market pressuring the BOJ again, similar setup to uh, to what we saw here. So I'd be looking for a move back up into that 150, uh, 150, 50, 151 area. And then we'll see if the BOJ acts again. At this stage, it would really take a break through 145.90 with some downside acceleration in early Asian trade to set up a move to test monthly projected range support and the pivot there, 143. And in terms of data, rounding things out down under in Australia, Monday, RBA Assistant Governor Kent speaks at a global markets conference in Sydney. And then uh, Tuesday, the federal budget uh, is released for 2022, fiscal year 2023. Uh, last time the budget deficit was $31.9 billion. Looking, markets anticipating here the potential for a negative $45 billion as, uh, deficit, as the deficit widens on expenses. Then heading into Wednesday, a bunch of inflation data, CPIs uh, year over year, trim green year over year, looking 55 
7% uh, respectively. Food, dwellings, electricity and domestic holidays all driving headline inflation higher. There is significant uncertainty regarding the impact of the electricity rebates and markets expect that they will be significant, holding the increase to just 1.1%. Then heading into Thursday, uh, export price index last time out was a positive 10.1% print, but there is a whisper number in the market here that we could see a negative 7% print as commodity prices have really come down from highs on global growth fears. And then we round out the week with Q3 PPI on Friday, 1.4% last time out. And uh, really, markets are going to be focused on the impact of construction costs into that, uh, into that number. And so from a technical perspective, Aussie dollar traded to the target zone of that 63.90 on Friday. So what I'd be watching for now in terms of the bullish case is if we can maintain uh, prices above the high volume load here, 62.60, 62.70s. I look for further upside extension. The initial target on a move through 63.90 will give us 64.50 and then on to the 161 extension at 65.08. At this stage, any loss of the 62.10 level on a closing basis with bearish development opening a move back down into test those 61.60s and then I would guess 61 would become the downside magnet. But for now, focus uh, on the upside. We're looking for a grind here into the 65 handle. And let's just check in with Bitcoin to get that weekend risk barometer pulse here. Uh, still trading within the triangle here, Bitcoin. And so we have resistance. 19,300 and support coming in at 18,850 till we get a sustained break of the triangle. At this stage, personally, I can see it's trading up into the resistance area, 19,930 on the upside break. However, if we take out the 18,800 on the downside, we're then looking at 18,690 and then into range support down to 18,195. And as I'm sure you're all aware by this stage for the regular uh, watchers of this analysis, 12,185 is that downside equality objective. Okay, traders, that wraps up the weekly market outlook for week commencing 24th of October. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.